Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And, uh, Alex, welcome to a new year. It's 2019, and everybody, hope the yep. new year treated you well and all that good yep. stuff. You got all the gifts from the New Year's baby? Uh, that's that's what happens, right? The New Year's I, baby gives I don't, you gifts? I don't think that's a thing, but it, no. it, it might be. Should be. Uh, but, uh, yeah, welcome to a new year and uh, another one of our more regular episodes. Alex hasn't actually been on the show for about a month. Because hey. we had the live play. <laughs> yeah. So, Nathan broke that up nicely for everyone to listen to so he could have a break and, yeah. and not have to talk to me for a month. <laughs> that was pretty great. Uh, but we're back. We're and back. Alex has returned. Hello, Alex. everyone. It's a new me. It's a, me. New me. It's a me. Uh, it's a me. Alexo. Uh, yeah, no, you're not Wario uh, or Waluigi. You're, ah! you're, the, you're the Waluigi, yeah, because you, you are not in Super Smash Brothers mode. Uh, <laughs> one of the few people who aren't. Uh, so we're, we're back, and we're back with some uh, regular episodes, some more familiar episodes, which is why uh, we decided that we would use the first episode back uh, to talk about something that's, uh, I guess, kind of been on our mind and uh, we wanted to address. Is that a fair way of saying it? Our collective minds. I guess you could say so. There, there's been some stuff around. So to explain, um, there's probably an actual word for this, and, and if anyone knows of what you like to call it, that's great. But for the purposes of this conversation, I've coined it as Giant Slayer Syndrome. And it basically has everything to do with, with how we interact with some of the biggest people in the gaming space. And it's not necessarily limited to uh, tabletop or to streaming or to, uh, to video games. It's sort of like all over the place. And we wanted to talk about some of the things that kind of bothered us and our thoughts on it sure i kind of got sparked to actually do this uh when alex was talking to me about a thing and we are gonna do our darndest to not use uh too many specific people or or things i can think of a couple things where it's gonna be almost impossible not to but we're, we're gonna do our darndest to leave individuals out of it we're going to try uh, not to call people out because that's just, you know, what we're we trying to not, address not doing, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to try to not dox people. Uh, but it, if, you know, I, I know a few people that I want to support and, and talk to. So I might Nathan's address names. is. Yes. Yeah. Nathan's actually. address for. But d to not to not, uh, you know, bad mouth people, because we don't want to really do that. But um, if you could just tell me the, the thing that really perturbed you you that kind of led us to this uh episode oh i was telling you about a thing uh just barely after the new year i think mm -hmm. uh a certain youtube person getting called out for practices they weren't in a habit of using that they didn't do that someone thought they should have done right. is that too vague is that too vague um, I th I think what you can probably say is uh, somebody that's in, like, the gaming YouTube space was called out by a designer of which they have been playing their game. Okay, yeah, that that's good. I mean, if okay. you know about this, then you already know probably what we're going to talk about a little bit here. It's a thing. It happened. It was a whole mess. Kerfuffle. A kerfuffle of messes. <laughs> and so yeah. it, it struck a chord with me, and I talked to Nathan about it uh, a couple days ago as well, and it struck the same chord with him. Um, yeah. And what it comes down to is uh, said YouTuber uh, live-streamed a game, giving their however many views mm -hmm. in live streams, uh, uh, live stream currency, as you will, <laughs> Um, they, they purchased the game and played it for their live stream and the creator called them out for not providing a link to the game, uh, anywhere on the live stream and for an honest mistake. And then for using metadata appropriately to get people t interested and able to find what they were doing on the live mm. stream. 
And, and the first part of that that perturbed me was, as us, we're creators. We create this content for you, our podcast. And mm-hmm. we do a lot of interviews. We have yeah. done a lot of interviews. Yeah. And while we always make sure to provide a link to the information to find the games easier, to find where they are located and all of that. It's not something that like we're paid to do. Right. It's because we're like, hey, we're talking about your game specifically. We're interviewing you specifically. If people want to be able to find you, we're going to make it easier for them because we're nice. It's, it's convenient. Yeah. I don't know. We do a lot of that because when people come on and they're, they're trying to promote their, their Kickstarters or, or they have a product that we want them to know about, I want to just make it a little bit simpler for them to be able to do that. But by no means do I think that that is just immediately implied regardless of what you're doing. If you're playing a game on stream or anything like that, or you're playing a tabletop game and you have it live streamed for other people, I know a lot of people that do D and D podcasts and do D and you know they don't really provide links to Dungeons and Dragons. You can pretty much figure out how to get in touch with Dungeons and Dragons if you wanted to, and and the fact that they're playing it, I really have never seen the people at Wizards of the Coast or Dungeons and Dragons get all up in arms about like, oh, they're playing our game and making a show out of it. Like, I really have never seen that, even with smaller creators. Because it's exposure. Yeah. Any, any, honestly, any exposure is good exposure, even if it's Mm -hmm. not good, quote unquote, exposure. Yeah. Like, even if they have a bad time playing your game, they're still showing it off. Right. I mean, it's right. still good. Pr- As they say, any press is good press. Anything that gets you in front of a ton of people is, it may not be good for your image, but it's good for right. your exposure to different people. And in this case, yeah. it was a, a very popular YouTuber providing hundreds of thousands of views right. on their live stream, getting called out for a practice they weren't normally in the habit of using. And and who, for the record, just in case anyone's not aware, had already made it very clear how much they like the game and the creator and had done videos making that very well known. So it's not like it was negative press in the first place. It was a positive review, a positive look at a game that they already liked. You know, when we're we're talking about this and we're talking about like the, the essentially the kings of the hill and how people have a tendency to interact with them, we are in no way in that space. Uh it it will take so long for us to actually get to the top of the hill. <laughs> and so we don't get affected by this. You know, it, no one no one really does this to us. Yeah, um, it's not cut it's not a story of ourselves, but it's just something no. that we as creators kind of went, "Huh?" Right, because, you know, I I think that there's this thing where when a small creator, and a lot of us are, sees that happen to people who are big, uh, it's a little discouraging. Like, what happens when I get to the top? Am I going to have to deal with this crap, basically, on on an air constant basis? And how many places are, are going to be targeting me? This was another thing that I had seen. Uh, you have a case where you might see someone who has maybe a negative opinion about your thing. It is still exposure, and I happen to see uh, one where another YouTuber, who is a different YouTuber, <laughs> uh, was uh, talking about getting uh, basically content claimed for doing a, a trailer reaction for, for a movie. And Oh yeah, they got a copyright strike for it? He got a copyright strike for it, but he was sitting there kind of like... Did they try to copyright strike just everyone who was doing reaction videos? Because there's like 50 or 60 of them. They might have. Maybe they did. It's possible. But when they go back and look at it, it seems like the ones that they're getting struck on are the ones that seem to have a fairly negative view and not a positive one. So that's that's another thing that kind of feels like, yeah, but you are getting exposure and they have a pretty big audience and it's it, it, a lot of people probably wouldn't even know that your thing was going to happen 
if yeah. they hadn't talked about it. Uh, and yeah, I, I get that it's not always, you know, you know, rainbows and unicorns, but, you know, just the fact that people are discussing it is important. We live in an age of influencers. We do. And, and it's, so, a lot of them are online and YouTube and yeah. podcasts and things like that are immense. Yeah. And I know we know a lot of indie developers for tabletop games. Yeah. But we've yeah. never really had any of them come and say, hey, you owe me this. Right. And it's right. It's, and to us to see that kind of reaction to a, yeah. e even a big YouTuber in general. Yeah. It's like, did you like go after every other streamer who did yeah. not link a link to your game on Steam? Right. Like right. the one the person <laughs> with a hundred views, did you go after them because of it? Or is it just because this guy's got that many and you're like, Well, I yeah. I want to go after you because you're the big guy on the hill and you should have done right. this for me because the part that got me was the mentality that you should give all the help you can to indie designers because they need it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he already paid for your game. Right. He's giving you all these free views and clicks and a positive review of your game, but you mm -hmm. want more out of him. My reaction was, are you paying for this as a sponsorship are you giving them a free copy of your game to play and if the answer to either of those are no then mm -hmm. honestly they do not owe you anything they That's have true. already given you their money right and uh, like for me you know if i say i'm playing this you're playing assassin's creed, o creed odyssey i i haven't yet but i probably will soon but if i oh, end sorry. up playing assassin's creed well I'm still a little, just side note, I'm a, still a little trepidatious about getting Odyssey because there are, are sharks. And you know how I feel about sharks in games. You love sharks. I hate sharks in games. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a thing. I dealt with the underwater combat in Origins, but it was, all you had to deal with were, were hippos and crocodiles. And now hippos, they will, sharks. hippos will mess you up. Hippos do mess you up in that game, just for the record. Uh, but at <laughs> least you could, you can hit things underwater in the new Assassin's Creed, so I wasn't that it's not like in Black Flag when you just had to hide from him. But uh, yeah, I'm a little trepidation about Shark. But regardless of that, if I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, regardless of my thoughts on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the fact is, I have a video where I'm talking about and showing you what it's like to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And right. so I've never really had game companies get angry at me or concerned because a game... Now, it might just be because I'm so small, no one even notices that you're kind of like off the radar. But I really have had very few problems with people getting up in arms about it. And uh, I think it's just because, you know, par for course in the modern spectrum, uh, that's, that's just something that that happens it falls into kind of like viral marketing the other thing since we're kind of talking about etiquette when it comes to the big uh people in the space the the other kind of thing that i've seen that i wanted to touch on a few things actually but oh, the, the, okay. the first thing is um when it comes to like uh streamers so it's kind of impossible not to not to talk about this without mentioning the actual person <laughs> but uh ninja is uh kind of like one of the biggest uh, gaming streamers that's out there right now. Uh, it's it, hard not to say that. Just look at his daily numbers. I try not to because I don't like weeping. You don't like weeping at how many people will watch. But at any rate, it's well over a hundred thousand uh active watchers, and he's on for like sometimes seven or eight hours in a day. Yeah, it's it's literally his job. It is it is a very lucrative job, apparently, too. And it's <laughs> the thing that really uh, immediately gets people thinking, well, who's going to be the next ninja? That's the, always the next thing. Is that, like, oh, somebody made it to the top. Now who dethrones them? And Same thing uh, with PewDiePie. Yeah, PewDiePie. Jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, wait, T-Series is coming for you, PewDiePie. Yep. T-Series yeah. is coming. And it's like, yeah, but that's a whole network, and it, it it's not even a really great correlation to to Felix. But regardless of that, it, it, you know, it, the the whole idea of trying to continuously find the next person who's going to take the place of the person in front 
is kind of frustrating too. And I was at least very heartened that some of the people that they were talking to who are in league to do that when it comes to Ninja were sort of like, yeah, I'm, I'm not taking the bait. You know, I, I respect what he does. Um, you know, he, he's, he's something to aspire to and we're not going to play that game. And I'm glad that they did that because it's so easy for people to just look from the outside and say, yeah, get him, get him, get him, get, just for, get him. Just for the sheer fact that they are gettable. You got to get them. So gotta that's get them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that. It's not a healthy attitude to have, you know, sometimes granted uh, companies and, and individuals who are successful, sometimes they make mistakes and sometimes they screw up royally and sometimes they do, frankly, dick moves. And when that happens, <laughs> uh, when that happens, uh, yeah. We can call them out on it, but the very idea that you're just calling people out for the sake of it is just not great. And I don't really know how to uh to to express it. I, I don't I don't really know how better do you have a better way to put it than I'm trying to put it right now? I think what you're trying to say is don't be dicks to be dicks just because people are dicks. Thank you. That that was <laughs> that was probably more dicks in that sentence than I was hoping to put in. But yeah, that's basically it. If that's more um, dicks than the uh, episode usually has, <laughs> at least three more. New year, um, new dicks. New year, new dicks. That's our that's our resolution. I don't think that's a good resolution, Nathan. No, no we probably shouldn't have that as a resolution. That'll, that'll be the title of this episode: New Year, New Dicks. <laughs> I think we might get flagged. (laughs) I think we might get flagged for NSFW content. Oh God, no! We have to have an explicit tag on this now. (laughs) With your new hosts, Richard and Richard, (laughs) who show new dicks, tricky Um, and dicky. On on a similar topic, one of the other things I wanted to mention was when you're trying to defend somebody who's under attack and you inadvertently make it worse. This one, I don't know if, if you're aware of this one, but I, I had seen something. And again, I, I could try to do this without mentioning people, but everyone's going to know who I'm talking about anyway. I in no way disparage him. I'm actually going to try to do a, 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 little, a little signal boost on something that he had, uh, he had brought up. But um, you're probably familiar with a, a guy whose name is uh, Matt and his last name is Mercer. And he is the DM for Critical Role. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, And I don't think it's controversial to say that Critical Role is the most popular D&D live play there is. Uh, I'm not like we've talked to other people who do them and what they do is great. But if we're just talking about sheer numbers of people watching live. Okay. Critical Role is basically by the numbers the the big guy on the hill. Matt Mercer had not too long ago uh put out a thread that I saw on Twitter and um he had been talking about people that were were trying to defend critical role because there are there there are plenty of critics that talk about how well it's like performance and you know it's not really dungeons and dragons. So the defense that comes in is, well, you can't really get angry with them because they're not really playing Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if that helps the case. How are they not playing Dungeons and Dragons? They're they're actually playing. And I thought that it was great because he actually had a whole thread where he was talking about um, that he has to smile when he hears the defense for them that they're not actually playing Dungeons and Dragons. Because, you know... it, there is no particular way to play Dungeons and Dragons specifically. Yes, there, yes, there is, Nathan. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I'm I'm sorry. That's right. You have to you have to get out. You I have I, to do the dungeon crawl. Or it's I'm not, not sure. Really I'm not sure what the. D&D. I don't understand that argument. They're not really playing Dungeons and Dragons. Well, because it, you know what they are. They're they're voice actors. You know they're they're doing an acting thing. They're they're, they're it's it's a, like a drama. It's not. But it, therefore, it couldn't possibly be D and D. But with that logic, wouldn't anyone who tries to have a voice for a character be a voice actor at that point? Mm-hmm. Hello, my name is Timmy the Bard. Yeah. I would then be voice acting as Timmy the Bard? Yeah. yeah would, that, but... would that logic not transfer over? 
Oh, like people like think. to people <laughs> like to play games, and they like to, some people like to use voices. Mm-hmm. So I don't see where they might be voice actors. Yeah, but at the end of the day, who says voice actors can't enjoy D and D as well? Maybe they like D and D because they're voice actors. Maybe they enjoy it because it's it's a format where they can really utilize the kinds of things they enjoy doing. You know, like this- that would go to uh, like when we were talking to Ed Turner about late, uh, uh, by the author of Lady Windermere's Fan. Yes, which is yes. a whimsical improv based game. I would think an improv actor would love to play that because it would play to their strengths. Right. Right. So if if you were to if you were to do a live stream of improv actors playing by the author of Lady Windermere's Fan, would that then be a theatrical piece, or yeah. would it be some people enjoying a game but just kind of filming it? It's it's the kind of thing that I feel is very reductive because different people are gonna play the same game differently, and that's sort of the whole strength of an RPG. If I'm a writer, or if I'm an actor. Or if I'm a strategist, I'm gonna play the game differently. It doesn't mean you're not playing D and D. You're just side... playing it different ways. Here's a side question for you. Sure. When they did D and Diesel, did people complain oh. because he's an actor playing D and D? Probably somebody did, but I'm I sure didn't hear. Did. Like I'm sure I didn't see. Did. I didn't. I personally haven't seen anything about that. People going, oh, well, he's actually an actor, so it's not really playing D&D because he's acting. Right. right. But I'm like, he enjoys D&D, so yeah. it's, it's okay. What about, like, Harmon Quest? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know. Or if you looked at, like, when they did, uh, what, Storm King's Thunder, uh, for, uh, where that was actually also DM'd by Matt Mercer. But those were actors and comedians and, and uh, writers who are in the entertainment space, and they were sitting around doing a campaign for D&D. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, it's the reason why the space for watching people play is so vast, I believe, is because no two groups are going to play the same way. And they're always going to bring interesting things to the table. And so watching different characters with different groups, being able to explore those characters further or play them how they want really allows you to see the, the breadth of a, a singular RPG. It doesn't even have to be D&D, but it could be any RPG. You get to see how that can interact with different groups. The other thing that came up with that, too, that he addressed is how people basically were like, you know, they have like a team of writers and they figure this out behind the scenes. And he finds that to be, he was saying, I find that to be like the biggest compliment that you think that we had this all scripted out before we started. Because the, the, that's one of the biggest compliments for an actor that you thought we planned all this. Because no. <laughs> We're See, playing the game, on don't that, know what's like, going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you might have some of the stuff scripted for, like, the DM for what things are going to go down. That's normal, though. That's typical D&D with a well-prepared dungeon master. But the idea that the players know, and they're reacting because they know what the story is, like, yeah, I, I don't think that... That's possible. Like, having actually had a, at least a modicum of experience in this field now, actually playing the game. So, I, here's here's I, the thing, though, Nathan. If the, yeah. if the players have their parts all scripted out beforehand and the game is completely scripted, that means they have to be using weighted dice with every single roll. Yeah, you can't have, you can't have any mechanics in the game at that point. <laughs> no, because <laughs> that, your dice rolls are going to be different unless you use a weighted dice with a specific yeah. number that you've already determined will happen. That's the thing, is that, you know, one wrong roll, and before you know it, your game has taken a dramatically different turn, and and your character is going to go off in a different path, so how do you script for all that? It's just not logical, but it's what you have with uh, a lot of, of the performance groups that are out there that, that do this, like, like Critical Role, like our friends over at Maze Arcana or Encounter Role Play, is you have people that have done this for a little while and they get into their character and they just start to understand how their character works. And so when situations come up 
they act accordingly, which is, go figure, sort of like they're role-playing. And I can't <laughs> imagine why you would be playing Dungeons & Dragons if you were trying to do something as silly as role-playing. <clears throat> you know... It's... See, I think the biggest difference there in some of these, what you're going to call performance games, mm. is that in the role-playing and the storytelling, it's going to be probably different than your typical Friday night D&D group that sits around your kitchen table with you and your friends. Possibly. But I think, I think the biggest difference there is going to be the fact that a lot of these people, Matt Mercer and the people he has on, and, um, like Satin and Rudy over on... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Inkwell and Maze, Maze Arcana, is that a bunch of the people that are doing this, for instance, Rudy and Satin, both have acting experience. Yeah. yeah and they, they know how to get into character. They know how to play as a character and be in that character role and make it a, a presentable way that seems probably more fluid. When you're used to being in front of a camera... You're used to being in front of a camera. When you're, when you're used to actually being live, you get used to being live. And you know what? If you utilize that for anything, good. Go for it. And it's, I, I don't really understand the arguments that, well, it's not D&D &D or it's not. Or, yeah, no, they must have figured this out ahead of time. It's like, well, no, you know, it's just... They've just gotten very used to their characters, and that's okay. And you you can play D&D &D in many, many different ways. You can play a video game in many different ways. Not everyone's going to move in the same direction or do the same things, you know? The one other thing that I wanted to address was something that me personally, having been the person to try and contact people to be on the show, and I want to make it very clear to everyone out there, no one really owes you their time. I know that it's it's really hard for like a small creator, and we're a small creator, to say, man, I don't know why like the biggest people in the industry won't come on the show. I always assume it's because, hey, people are busy. Some people are very especially if they're, busy. Especially if they are, you know, big in their industry that they're in. Yes. When you um, are at the top, your time is limited i've sent uh invites out I, I've, I've i've sent letters to different people and sometimes i hear back sometimes i don't uh when i hear back and people are willing to be on the show as we had some really big names on this previous year uh i am yeah i remember thrilled. i remember when you're like hey guess what we got matt leacock come on the show and you were and like, i was stoked. like how did i make that happen um, but you, I was, you were, you were stoked. I was, I was, I was absolutely stoked. My mental state going into contacting people is not, boy, I hope I hear back from them or I am just going to be in a tood all day. <laughs> My attitude is I'm throwing a Hail Mary pass. If I hear back from them, I'm ecstatic. If I don't, I get it, you know? And so when I hear back from people, I am thrilled. And when I don't hear back from them, I'm like, well, they, they probably never even got to check their email <laughs> to find out if I even contacted them. And you know what? That I understand. Sometimes you contact people during the busiest time, during during convention season. and During the just, holidays. During the holidays. And you're just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what their schedule is, so I can't really uh, say. I never feel like any of them owe me a call back or owe me a, a letter back at all because... They got stuff to do, too. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a lot of time. And if you figure that you're trying to talk to some of the people who are at the top of their industry, how many letters do you think they receive on a day-to-day -day basis? How One. Many? One yeah, letter. They, they only uh, receive uh, uh. yours, and that's all they ever it's, will. No, it's only yours, Nathan. Everyone at the top of the industry only receives one letter a day, and it's all from you. It's all for me. Every the reason they don't seen. reply is because they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true, too. They know who I am, and they don't want to talk to me. You know what, though? For me, 
I'd even be really thrilled if they responded back and they're like, I know who you are and I don't want to talk to you. Because it's like, oh, they know who I am. <laughs> that's that's my takeaway from that. I situation. feel like if that happens ever, you just need to print that out and like frame it on I'll your frame wall. it on the wall. I will put it on the wall. I'm not going to be angry. This is important. I'm not putting there to shame anybody. I'm putting it there as a mark of honor. <laughs> it's like knows who I am. <laughs> You're just like, hey, Alex, Matt Mercer got back to me finally. But like, oh, sweet, what do you say? He'd be like, I know who you are, and I do not want to talk to you. Please stop messaging me. <laughs> no, I would totally frame that. That would be absolutely like on terrific. the wall. We would, uh, we would use that as a new uh, our, our show icon if that happened. Ever. Yeah, no, no. I, I had sent a response back after I saw that thread, and I, I actually did. Because I, I have asked in the past, but I know it was a busy time <laughs> at, when, when I happened to contact him. Um, but I, I had left a response that was basically, man, I would love to be able to talk to you about this on the show, but I understand that your schedule is banana nut butters, but I will at least, ex I, I will extend my, you know, solidarity in what little non-existent way I can. Because for me, if, if you have these people who are willing to, to give their time, it is an honor for them to do that. And uh, I am an honor, I, to, an honor to them, or an honor to honor to, to honor you, to me. Creator. On, okay. Honor, honor to me. It's an honor to me for them to do it. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. We'll probably both be contacting some people who are pretty big in various parts of the industry. Maybe not even specifically in role playing or anything like that. But um, might not even be tabletop. Who knows? It's a new year. Woo! I know. <laughs> it's a new year, new dicks. And, <laughs> and, and, so get prepared to get contacted by a couple of dicks who have nothing better to do with their time. I think our show is explicit now. I, do you think that we've we've we're not a clean podcast anymore? Sorry. You know what? Yeah, I, I, honestly, <laughs> I want to tell you. I think the ones that get the most views are not are not. Clean. Safe. I think they're explicit. So <laughs> they are pretty explicit. We probably actually. need to swear more. I guess we gotta swear more because we I need to get we it. need to get Elon Musk on smoking pot. Oh God! <laughs> the problem is you can't visually see it on the podcast, so I don't know if that's gonna register. So he's well. been there the whole time, guys. Yeah. You know what? We get Seth Rogen on, and then it's just implied. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it's there just you go. there. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, when it comes down to uh, what I uh, said at the beginning was, was Giant Slayer Syndrome, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that's a healthy way to look at the space. And if you are a small creator out there, you, you know, think about what it would be like when you get to the top, because hopefully you will. We, we have high hopes for all of you. And how you would hope people would interact with you. Um, it, it doesn't have to be an adversarial relationship. It doesn't have to be trying to knock other people down in order to get to the top. We can have positive interactions even with the people who are the biggest creators in our respective spaces. And we strive. Um, I know Nathan and I strive for positive interactions with the people that we deal with. Um, right. So we're not coming out of anywhere like personal too yeah. much for it right. but it's definitely stuff that we've thought about and just like kind of like what yeah i'm like especially especially the stuff at the beginning and it was just that one hit me and i was just like what the heck yeah i'm like this guy gives you his time and his energy and does something positive for what you've put out yeah and you're just gonna especially the metadata part it's like you're going to yell at someone doing content creation for appropriately using metadata to relate mm. what you're doing to something they've right. done in the past that is wildly popular. That meta metadata tags are used specifically to help you find content. So if you're typing something in, it's going to come up with everything that comes up with that metadata. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and kudos so, like, if you know how to do it correctly. Because so, I for instance, with Delve, <laughs> if yeah. we're we're putting the metadata in for RPGs, tabletop games, specifically the games, mm -hmm. I assume that I assume Nathan's been tagging them right. Um, yeah, I have. I've, specifically, I've, the content in the episode and related yes. content to them, because if it's a game you've never heard of, chances are you're not going to be searching for it. Right. So typically uh, I have like just the standard metadata tags that we usually do for every episode, which revolve around what the show is. And then there are usually specific tags that I add in due to what we are currently discussing on the show. And usually that has, uh, that includes, or at least I try to remember to include names 
in game titles and uh, what it relates to, if it's a card game or if it's a cooperative game. And that just makes, that's just good metadata usage, honestly. But right. when when this person got called out for using the metadata and saying, why did you use all of those tags for this other game that isn't ours? Mm. And it's just like, do you understand how that works? It's there to provide searchability. Which yeah. means all those tags being stuff some people look for. If you just looked at the tags on that specific game, there mm-hmm. was like five or six videos on YouTube about it. Yeah. But when you search the other metadata tags that were related to a different game that it is similar to and took inspiration from, there is a lot more content. So mm. it's there to enable you to find stuff. Right, because if you have a game that is kind of unknown, and then you have games that are similar to it, sometimes putting those in tags also lets people know that this is, like, similar to a thing. So, so Nathan, in the metadata for this episode, you know that you have to use specific tags that we're not talking about, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> Alex, uh, out of curiosity, if if there's such a thing as giant slayers, do you think there's something uh, like uh, jack slayers? Yeah, I think it's just the giants stepping on jacks. The giants are stepping on jacks, yeah. But not like not like jacks that you'd play jacks no, with. No, no, just just dudes named Jack. Yeah, because otherwise that would hurt a lot. Yeah, New Year, New Jacks. New Year, New Jack. That, that's phrasing. <laughs> Oh, the can other we, thing get... wasn't, but this one is. <laughs> okay. Can we, can we get uh, John H. Benjamin just on our show for one minute to say phrasing and then leave? Oh, that would be perfect. Let's just, Very uh, Archer. Let, let's just do that. You know, it's, it's a new year, but uh, we still have uh, that website. The, the Delvcast.com one? Uh, Delvcast.com, yeah, you can still go there. And uh, what can they find when they go to Delvcast, anyway? Oh, man, you can find uh, last week's episode called Gone Fishing. Yep. There's nothing there. It's There's empty. Nothing there. Nope. Yep. Yep. Nothing. It's good. Stuff. You can find our Delvinations, aka the show. You can find Orbital. You can find Attempting to Play. Mm-hmm. You can also find that on YouTube. You can find links to our social media, our Patreon. Uh, if you are having trouble finding us on social media, though, we will give it to you here. Uh, we have a Facebook group. It's just Delvcast, and you can also find us on Twitter. I am at Titanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is still at Dell Podcast. That's correct. And also, we are now on Spotify. We are on Spotify. So if uh, you listen to podcasts through that particular application, you can find us there as well. Finally put the show there. Yeah, well, you know, without going too far into it, it's um, just Spotify made a really simplified way so that it's easy for people who don't have a specific service to get their podcast streams uh, listed on, and I'm really happy that they did that because now yeah because before it was it was much harder to try and do that you had to be through a specific service in order to do it but now now they they pretty much let anybody submit them so uh oh, so good. We, we, we were able to do that and uh while we're on that subject uh we are also on a whole bunch of other places like itunes and google play uh so please rate and review and subscribe when you go or if you go to spotify uh do that because i think you can do something similar uh but whatever they let you do do that thing well, Just let us know you listen to the show. It's 2019. Come on, guys. (laughs) It's 2019. Come on, guys. Come Come on. on. Forget about it. Forget about it. If you, uh, uh, and, uh. If if you have thoughts on this as well, uh, you can you can make sure to check us out on Twitter and uh, just just uh, give us a little response or uh, respond in uh, comments down below. Yeah, let us know we're wrong. That's fine. Yeah, just let us know you're we're wrong and we're stupid and yeah, uh, whatever. And we smell like butts. That's also take good. us down. Take us down. Yeah, Do take it. us down. You. We can't really go much lower, so you might as well kick us while we're down. <laughs> That's Nathan, gonna... what? We got negative views. What? <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, there were people who didn't uh, listen to begin with, but they decided to retract their non-listening. <laughs> yeah, they they took out our listeners and just downvoted us to all hell. Oh my god, if I ever see a negative count on views, I am posting it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll think that's a success too. <laughs> you, we we set the bar low here. You know what's going to happen is I'm going to have like a YouTube video and it will say that you had x number of views and then when YouTube goes through and is like trying to figure out like the bot numbers and stuff, it will miscalculate and go 
backwards. <laughs> there you go. There you and go. The most disliked video on YouTube. With literally less. It, it than will zero no longer views. be the YouTube rewind. <laughs> yeah, it will be the YouTube. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's not even here. It's no longer the rewind. It'll just be us. Uh, we also wanted to thank our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dominic Perry. Uh, and so, if you are, want to become a patron. Uh, like those fine folks and several others, you can also click the Patreon banner on the website and check out a lot of the uh, outtakes, extended episodes, and uh, some of the uh, the draft materials that I had for some of the projects. I have those up there as well. Uh, do you? Yes, I do. I'll have to check. I'll have to check those out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll you'll have to check those out and some some archived uh, things that kind of went back in the vault. That you might not be able to find elsewhere. Uh, put some of those on there for for people. So there's a. There's and some, just remember, mm. just remember, our patron starts at a dollar per month. That's right. And for that one whole dollar, all of that content gets unlocked. So yeah, ba basically, we set the bar as low as you could because we want you to experience our content, and and it just helps us cover some of the costs of running the website. That's right. And yep. all that fun stuff. So, so we wanted to give Unnecessary to listen to our normal show and get most of our normal content. But if you want a little extra for a dollar, you, you can it's, find it's, it there. It's cheaper than Netflix, just also a lot more disappointing than Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's less there than Netflix, but it's also a lot cheaper than Netflix. So you can think of it in those terms. Uh, so for, uh, for everyone that's out there, thank you for listening uh, to the show. I uh, hope you're enjoying some of like the, the newer episodes, more conversational ones that we're doing. Uh, hopefully we're going to be able to do more of these in the future uh, because I think it's the kind of thing that we really, really enjoy doing. If you have anything you want us to tackle, any topics, tabletop, gaming, design-wise, mm. let us know. We'll, uh, we'll consider it. Yep. Maybe even, if you want, have you on the show to... To yell at us and talk about it with us. Oh, don't I actually love yell at us. Na don't don't yell at Nathan. He he it hurts his feelings. I, you know what? My feelings can't get any more hurt <laughs> than they already have. I'm going Just to email you later and say, please don't talk to me anymore. I know who you are, so you can hang it on your wall. <laughs> yes, thank you. I need that. I need that desperately. I need that yes. to put on my wall. Perfect. I'll put it right behind my stuffed unicorn I have back here. And there it'll you be go. on every live stream after this. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.